you for the invitation. I will try to speak very slowly, which is not customary for me as a, as a teacher of 20 years, because I always have a lot of material to say. So tonight I will try to give a very brief presentation of this different reality, which I think and hope will not be in the end a different reality, but part of a larger reality in Europe that makes European continent both sustainable and just. Um, the platforms of municipalism mostly rise on these principles, um, but nowhere in the instrument of the platform is it guaranteed that they have to um, adhere to progressive principles and um, they, this is something that we have to fight for um, both locally and um, in what Europe can share. Sorry, I'm going to forgot to share a screen, but here we go. Um, in that, um, I do want to tell you something about uh, regional political ecology and why this is important. It's particularly important in Eastern Europe. Um, I know you don't see Greece as uh, necessarily a part of that, but further up north in that, in the wildernesses of the barbarian East, we are often characterized as uh, nations or groups or states where um, due to poverty and post-socialism sustainability doesn't uh, feature high and it has been a feature of the work I've been doing for a long time uh, as a researcher and, uh, and educator that beneath that veneer, that surface, um, Eastern Europe uh, and, and Southeastern Europe actually does have both the practices and vision of uh, a fair and, uh, and just sustainability. But regionally, we are a semi-periphery um, of Europe. Uh, there's a, there are high concerns for future uh, in terms of sustainability and also for uh, health. Uh, adaptation to climate change is the primary challenge for the region uh, and for the cities in the region. Uh, in the next decade. Um, waste uh, is a big issue in that, both in the emissions it produces as well as general pollution um, combined uh, to, uh, to climate change. Uh, access to water and uh, avoidance of droughts is also a primary issue as well as um, energy transition. Um, but we were often told that in Eastern Europe, because of uh, poverty, there is lack of concern for environmental issues. And this survey from way back in 2008, so just before the economic crunch, um, has shown, um, this is a European values survey, that the agreement of people with a statement that it thinks continue on the present course, we will experience a major ecological catastrophe is a little bit higher in the poorer east, so down on this axis we have a sort of inequality adjusted uh, wealth score uh, by the UN uh, and up here is the percentage of agreement and these are the Eastern European countries, Bulgaria, Lithuania, Croatia, and the trend is uh, pushing slightly downward as we get to the developed um, north and west. Similarly, I won't bother you with details of, uh, of these kind of uh, uh, analyses that published uh, but similar trend on also, although not as, as strong, on a regular statement in the International Social Survey Program, which asks for agreement or disagreement with the statement that economic growth always harms the environment, that there's no panacea of miraculous green growth. Again, the trend line shows perhaps uh, even a, a slightly higher agreement in the East with that, but what we can see is that there's a scattering um, between uh, East and West uh, almost equally, and there's nothing particularly about, particularly obstinate to this statement uh, in the poorer East. Uh, in the media as well, this is just an illustration, there are topics of, uh, of uh, impeding dangers of climate change appearing even in Croatian 
uh, and it's being discussed more and more, and that definitely in the last years is a growing pressure. The groups like ours, which were closely associated with the movement and then uh, with the political platforms, have worked for a long time on research, education, production of publications, creation of conferences, uh, as well as uh, output of policy papers. And that is an important aspect on top of creating a political movement that you can create a narrative in the region which supposedly is unaware of it, which is ignorant of climate change, doesn't care supposedly, um, that you can reshape the narrative um, so that we can both look into what the concerns of people are, but also how these concerns connect to the major global concerns such as we're facing um, really this decade and such as they're playing with uh, in uh, Glasgow these days. In more detailed terms, uh, we looked into a series of statements related to a, a, a degrowth orientation, which is an essence of a, of a, of a green left uh, worldview on sustainability and justice combined. Um, and this is on the Croatian population in 2017, so sometime after the, the credit crunch. And there are expectations to some degree that technology can solve environmental problems or uh, there is a division between economic growth and how the environment always harms the environment between those who agree and those who disagree in the large segment of, um, of the undecided. But the interesting part in this battery, and the battery has been analyzed to death uh, by my uh, colleagues, researchers, and, and I'll show you later where you can look into uh, the papers themselves. Um, the interesting thing is here that agreement with statements such as just and sustainable economy requires a deep societal change go up to 90% agreement. Also statements like we must redistribute wealth to reduce poverty, again almost 90% agreement, and existing global economy is unsustainable, again uh, a majority agreement. Um, we have an even deeper analysis dating back to 2014, um, where uh, countries participating in these social surveys are ranked on uh, sort of their neoliberal orientation on this axis and the dematerialization of their economies uh, uh, on the x-axis. And the interesting thing here is, again, that the eastern countries, particularly Croatia, where I'm coming to Zagreb soon, um, seem to have an option of moving from the quadrant where environmental risk perception is very high, but pro-environmental behavior and orientation is very low by the standards, by the measures that are usually applied uh, in Western uh, democracies. But they seem to be pushing in the direction of a group of countries which have uh, a higher uh, dominant social paradigm closer to neoliberal orientation and highly dematerialized economies where environmental risk perception is lower, but pro-environmental behavior is also lower. Rather than into the group of countries um, sorry, where environmental risk perception is higher and pro-environmental behavior is higher. So there was a danger somewhere in that decade that we could be turning to economies, and that danger still exists, um, um, we could be turning to economies which are more destructive uh, than uh, both politically organized uh, and uh, materially supported for uh, uh, a possible and viable uh, sustainability that we need in the 21st century. When we looked at people who were of the pro degrowth orientation, and I won't go into detail why degrowth is important here, but we can do that in discussion, um, into the composition of uh, a population in our sample that exhibited a majority pro degrowth orientation we found three separate axes. One was environmentalism, one was a sort of general uh, social justice, or for short, they called it socialist attitude, and one was general uh, anti-materialism. And this is, of course, decomposing a very complex issue, which is a movement of people in populations, um, a bit like we decompose our body into chemical elements, but nowhere uh, will you find uh, uh, sufficiently isolated hydrogen or calcium in bits of your body, but they together work uh, in a complex mix that makes uh, you. Likewise, in this population, we found that slightly higher domination of women and older people, but education, profession, political orientation, and the like did not predetermine people 
to have this um, to have this sort of degrowth uh, outlook, which uh, uh, I would claim is a green left outlook um, as well. Um, so we divided them uh, into uh, groups which largely incline on the on the social justice axis or on the environmental axis or on the anti-materialist axis. And the, where they overlap is only 5% uh, of a nationally representative sample, and that's a tiny uh, population. So majority of people is in somewhere in the overlap of the two of the of the three large circles. Here is the article uh, where you can find uh, a detailed analysis of that uh, survey. But what we can say is that interestingly, our social justice orientation people come from richer households, they're more socially engaged, they are politically active, they are supportive of white state support and tend to be distrustful of other people. And distrust is a serious social problem in all of our societies because they, it prevents us from organizing both on municipal and commons level uh, where we don't have uh, a hierarchical uh, instrument of enforcing regulations, but we agree on them with others and trust others who follow them as well. Um, the anti-materialists uh, anti are the smallest group and they're interesting in that they are generally richer people, they're urban, well-connected, they have experience of volunteering and they're not necessarily environmentalists. So these are kind of your uh, 21st century hipsters uh, from urban centers. The environmentalists tend to be on a lower income, they prefer consciousness over laws, uh, they're politically disenfranchised, they didn't feel anyone represented them politically and they, they had to be persuaded that they might have a political voice, they're very wary of social benefits, uh, distrustful and tend to be lonely and depressed, which is a, uh, which is a problematic thing. Um, we can look at what conditions societies and cities perform in by putting them, uh, putting the performance indicators into a donut shaped uh, uh, visualization. Basically, you want to reduce or grow uh, uh, the values on the inner ring. So you want to, again, minimize the red leakage on the inner ring. Uh, and you want to reduce the values uh, on the outer uh, rings. Uh, the red wedges indicate the comparative size of these transgressions, so how bad something is. Ideally, you want to put everything, uh, reduce all the red uh, segments and, uh, and uh, bring all indicators that you choose uh, into the uh, performance space of the three uh, belt. The simple message is the jam in the donut has to stay inside, there should be no red leakages. It is possible uh, because some countries in the world show that uh, it can be nearly done. This is an instrument that's developed at the Institute for Political Ecology and that hasn't got much uh, time to talk about. But in Croatia, you can see that things like uh, carbon emissions can be bad and have a red leakage, but things like per capita energy usage can already be good and it shows the potential for a nation state to uh, build a, a transformative uh, social metabolism that is uh, appropriate for the uh, sustainable justice uh, in the 21st century. When we look at the city like Zagreb, and this is where we come to the uh, point, uh, on the biophysical indicators, uh, Zagreb, um, Zagreb has problems on carbon emissions, on air pollution, on green open spaces, on uh, food production within the city limits, um, as well as any kind of renewable energy production, so localized energy production in fact. It also has problems with material waste, with rubbish creation, with the amount of hours people spend in paid work, therefore not uh, being able to dedicate to care. There's still shortfalls even in educational attainment, even though it is the capital of the nation with uh, probably among the best schools, but also the largest uh, uh, university. And it's got a huge voter turnout shortage. And this is something that's important for municipalist platforms to tap into the voters who don't believe in representative politics and therefore are disenfranchised and won't play the game, but that makes the city governments underrepresented. But culturally, Zagreb has the least of the jam leakages uh, where we can see that in terms of uh, distrust, there is a bit of a problem, but in terms of issues like bigger support or climate change nonchalance, Zagreb people are concerned and they don't have a burden of not caring for climate change, at least to the comparative level 
uh, with other Croatian cities and the nation as a whole. So in conclusion, the population, population's attitudes, population's choices don't stand in the way of sustainability uh, or even just sustainability in places like Zagreb, but it's more the material base and especially the fact that the national infrastructure that is centered in the city, uh, in a capital city, does not uh, progressively lead to either greater um, uh, inclusion in democratic processes, in higher educational attainment, or in uh, a more sustainable social metabolism. In that respect, in uh, just before 2017 elections, a new platform, municipalist platform appears with a different way of communicating with catchy, uh, uh, catchy slogans and appeal to uh, younger and educated generation. I have to disclose here that I am a member of the platform. I don't have any executive roles and no representative roles. But I live in this city and I want to um, support uh, uh, progressive, uh, uh, progressive developments uh, for uh, a livable city in the 21st century. And this I only show you as an image of a use of a different type of politics, the use of a striking Iwo Jima-like image on top of a rubbish heap where Zagreb, this is Zagreb's uh, a waste heap where, where municipal waste is collected and deposited uh, and, the, and the scenes of the city in the background. In fact, this is how close the, the waste heap uh, is to, uh, to the city. It's, it's grown that, that close. Um, in 2017 elections, this platform wins uh, in a larger coalition, wins four seats in the uh, municipalist assembly and becomes the most active uh, opposition uh, um, in the assembly through a lot of um, uh, engagement with issues that both citizens are concerned with, but also anti-corruption work, etc. I'm sorry for this not so nice image, all the colors are wrong here, but I do have to stress that it was a part of a larger coalition. So we're mostly focused on Zagreb is ours platform, which eventually joined with um, what translates as the Spanish Podemos. So yes, we can uh, a national platform and Zagreb is ours is, a, is a, a local chapter now of the larger national platform. But there was also a National Green Party, a New Left Party, uh, a smaller party that was a, a, a pro-municipalism party, as well as a, a, a left party called the Workers' Front. Um, and together uh, they set up, the importance of a coalition was in communicating to the people that we can't all stay closed into our single issues. I care about waste, I care about volunteering, I care about uh, uh, common style governance, but that we have to pull this, these interests into a larger political body, into larger political representation, which can speak for a just sustainability uh, on the municipal and national level. There is also a thing of um, communicating to newer audiences. This is my very inapt still from a, a, a video song that was made for the 2017 campaign that featured platform member, members performing a dance in the regions of the city, which are not normally the ones that you would see on tourist images, but are the regions where people live. And there was a lot of uh, singing and dancing, which if technical conditions permit, uh, I could uh, uh, show you um, uh, in later discussion. But this was a very catchy, very appealing song talking about we can take the city into our own hands, we can make it a livable place for all of us, rather than uh, tourist extractivism and, uh, and other stuff that happens in the city. In the 2017 election, the program uh, is much simpler. You can see from the colors and design that's used, but the important thing is, I know you can't read any of this and you're not meant to, it is a local platform speaking to local people, um, but it talks about issuing a proposal of um, a programmatic direction and then opening it up for uh, a public discussion and then using the public discussion as a voting mechanism to select priorities for uh, the municipalist program. Here it's health, traffic, openness of the city. This is especially important in identitarian values which come with urban dwellers, uh, as well as of course the municipal waste which is a huge issue 
for the city of Zagreb. And that is how this programmatic document was created at the time when Croatian political parties don't play much by the program, but more by the identity politics that they tend to stand for. By 2021 elections, um, again, uh, really strongly for Mladen, but time is really running out. So if you could please wrap up as much as you can. So Thank wrapping you. up a sexier and more interesting program, which now talks about the new uh, governance models, about digital city, about the ways of how very much local governance is done at, at levels, sub-city levels, so local uh, local neighborhoods level, social policies, work and social partnerships, as well as then urban transport, etc. That leads us to the point where now there is a, a coalition governing the city, the, the Green Left Coalition, uh, uh, with the um, more traditional Social Democrat Party, uh, governing the city, majority in the city assembly, and the mayor, my former colleague Tomislav Tomasovic, uh, uh, the current mayor of the city. And this is how the media portrays it again. I'm sorry, I'm advertising certain media. But there is now in this transformation constant opposition to every step that is done to uh, create a, a fairer and, and, and more just city because it's unusual to the way European cities are run uh, and performed. My time's up and I stand available for uh, your questions in discussion later. Thank you very much and thank you to the translators for patience with my um, speedy English. Thank you.